My dear brothers and sisters, all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, we will be doing the tafsir of Surah Al Hujurat, verses 11 to 14. Uh, before we go into the, the surah itself, the verses itself, I just want to take a quick overview of the surah, which might have been done by someone who did the earlier verses, but just where this fits into the whole big picture of the surah. So we can say there are five, from this perspective, there are five different uh, sections of this surah, verses one to five, uh, deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul, the adab that is required to, to deal with the ahkam and the authority of Allah and his messenger. The second uh, section will be from verses 6 to 10, which is processing information among ourselves. How do you do that? And when physical conflicts come into a jama'a, how to avoid it getting bigger and to try and rectify when that happens. The third is verses 11 to 12, which we'll be doing today. How do we interact with our fellow Muslims? What to avoid in our relationship? Verse 13 deals with the humanity at large. And verse 14 to 18, which piece of that I will be doing, verse 14, how to achieve true Iman. So there might be different breakdowns and this is not the only perspective, but here we are looking at the perspective of Adab. And so we will be doing piece of the third portion, the fourth portion and piece of the fifth portion. So verses 11 and 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum, wa la nisa'un min nisa'in asa an yakunna khayran minhum, wa la talmizu anfusakum, wa la tanabazu bil alqab, بِسَ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اِجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الظَّنِّ إِنَّ بَعْدَ الظَّنِّ إِثْ وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا so we are going to just give a, a translation of those ayat, those two ayat. O you who believe, let not a group scoff at another group. It may be that the latter are better than the former. And let some, nor let some women scoff at other women. It may be that the latter are better than the former. Nor defame one another, nor insult one another by nicknames. How bad it is to insult one's brother after having Iman. And whoever 
does that and whoever does not repent then such are indeed the Zolimun. O you who believe avoid suspicion or avoid much suspicion indeed some suspicions are sin and spy not neither backbite one another would you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother you will hate it so fear Allah verily Allah is the one who accepts repentance the most merciful so what we're going to do is to uh, give a breakdown of these two verses in terms of what comes out of it and then we are going to expand on on those thought process so first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us do not mock one another and so what is mockery what does it bring out when you mock one another you think you're better than that person then women are singled out as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us and let not the women also scoff at one another that women are singled out and the question is why they will come under the laws of Ya Ayuha Ladina Amanu. But because it comes, women are more likely to fall into gossiping and speaking and making mockery of one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has identified them even though they would have fall into ya ayyuhalladina amanu and so whenever there is a general statement like oh you who believe which will include men and women and then you pinpoint some aspects of that after after making that general statement it means that something about that mention so women are mentioned here from Allah so you know it is not time to be feminist to you know defend why your, the name is mentioned here the name is mentioned because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants to identify that women must not fall into this trap of making mockery of one another um then do not defame one another that's the next point we get from this do not insult one another by using offensive names we call it nicknames but it will be offensive names and if any of these happen the beauty with our dean is that it gives us a way out through tauba so there is a way to seek tawbah, to rectify our behaviors if we have done any of those and seek forgiveness obviously from the person that you verbally injured. And if somebody does not do that, then verse 11, we are just breaking down verse 11 here. فَأُولَا إِكَهُمُ zalimun. That person is considered to be a zalim an unjust person or a transgressor sometimes it can be uh, uh, translated as and so nobody wants to face Allah on the day of judgment being a zalim because if we don't do that tawbah now in this world it means that we will face Allah with that sin of one of these or any of these or all of these in front of Allah on the day of judgment. So Allah gives us a way in this world to rectify ourselves. In the next verse 12, we will break down verse 12 as well. It begins with 
Ichtenibu kasira min al-zan. Avoid much suspicion. Okay? Do not spy upon one another. Tajassasu. Do not backbite one another. And this here, Allah gives the similitude of backbiting, like eating the dead flesh of the one you have backbitten. So that is disgusting to even think about it, let alone if you are going to do that, backbiting, it is equating with something as obnoxious as eating the dead meat of your brother, which is um, extremely gross. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, brings about the concept that repentance is necessary and consciousness or taqwa of Allah is what will help rectify if anybody has done any of those in Allah Tawabur Rahim. So Allah is the most repentant and the most merciful. So you we we see these two ayat. These two ayat are perhaps the major ayat when it comes to our interaction with one another. So what comes out of these verses, these two verses? is that this bullying by picking on others using offensive names, something that has caused a big alarm in our country right now, in schools, in job, at different levels where people bully each other. And by bullying each other, you call them offensive names, you call them bad names, you mock at them, you scorn at them, you show disregard to who they are. So this is where this is a blueprint Allah has given to us for our social interaction. So it means that the default, when I meet a brother or when I interact with a brother, my the default is that I should have a good opinion about that brother. If I start off with a negative feeling, negative relationship, then these things would likely to affect or to come up that you will make mockery of them. You will, you will tend to, to say bad things about them. You will, find a name, he is so-and-so or she is so-and-so. Um, you will see them and you will start to become suspicious about them. Um, you may want to backbite them. So the default of our relationship is that we should have a good opinion of each other. Sometimes there is a culture, a culture in which we come in, in which we come from, that likes to mock at people. You may have a brilliant idea, male or female, but sometimes the mockery is so much that uh, you tend to put all of these things, uh, your good thoughts, your good ideas, to discuss with people, discuss with family members because of this intense mockery that goes on within family, within friend circle, within society. And do not defame and belittle by slanderous talks. You know, you, he is so and she is so and, and all of this, you know, uh, talk that we talk against one another. And sometimes we make all of these offensive talks behind the person's back and in front of their face. You say, oh, mashallah, I'm so, so glad to see you. In fact, you're really not glad to see that person at all. If they were to see your mind, what you are saying about them, uh, it's not good. Um, today people, so do not insult one another by nicknames. So today we find that calling each other by offensive name uh, become 
pretty much normal. And offensive names, you think that, hey, you devil, come here, you know, some, you, if, can you imagine somebody calling you a devil? It might sound like it's cool, but it is not cool when you put names of people that are that are disgusting names, that are names that uh, depict evil or uh, names that are not um, accepted in our uh, Islamic um, circle, in our Islamic environment. So if a brother is Abdullah, you call him Abdullah. He's called, don't call him, hey, you fool, come here. You know, these are tough way of dealing with one another. Um, avoid in, avoiding suspicion means do not delve into people's intentions. Sometimes, you know, why did you come here, brother? What do you want? What this, what that, what that? You know, some people come to the masjid and they get that kind of questioning. Some people take shahada and people say, why did you come to Islam? What, what caused you in a very, you know, sarcastic way? Social media is also a, a means of bringing about this harm. And so you find a lot, of, a lot of what goes on in the social media and many of our young brothers and sisters are becoming more and more depressed of what goes on in the social media. Twitter, Facebook, all of these things are putting tremendous stress and depression and a lot of bullying goes on in, in, in the social media. A lot of suicide is taking place. As a matter of fact, the suicide rate among young children is very high. Perhaps it is at all high now um, since the social media has, has blossomed. You find that many of the young people who connect up with these things and they do not find themselves being liked on the social media and a group start, you know, making mockery or whatever it is on that person. That person feels depressed. They call him all kinds of names. You can go and kill yourself. And the person ends up killing himself or herself as we see. So we have to be aware and make sure our children uh, especially they know the dangers of and the harm that the social media can bring upon them in the background of these uh, yet. Spying, backbiting are very evil acts to deal with one another. It means you don't, you start losing trust with one another. If I feel that if I always feel that when I meet a brother or, or a sister meeting a sister and they have different agenda, then I will start to treat them differently. I will start to suspect them. I will want to read something that they have. I want to, I, I feel that this person might be, uh, have evil, evil uh, thoughts in, in talking to me. And so there is not going to be that peace and harmony, the love, the trust with one another, the brotherhood that is supposed to be built. These things corrode all of that. And particularly backbiting. You say things about your brothers and, you know, behind their back so that, and you always sugarcoat that will say, you know, I'm not backbiting him, but I'm I'm just telling you. And what is the purpose of telling you? Just to spread information, not to rectify the brother. So if we want to rectify, we address the issue. We talk to the brother. We go and talk to the brother or the sister. And we address the issue with one another. And so backbiting is like eating the dead flesh. Um, I think my time is, is getting shorter. Um, so these verses outline the negative aspect of human conduct, which a believing Muslim in particular must refrain from in order to practically maintain unity. So these things affect the unity of the Muslim community, Muslim brothers. 
So restraining the tongue can assist in averting disunity and discontent among Muslims. If not checked, it could result in the disintegration and total moral collapse of the Muslim community. If everybody backbite everybody and everybody is spying on everybody, you can imagine what that will, will lead to. So believing Muslims are not only prohibited from reviling or ridiculing one another, but also prohibiting from reviling or ridiculing all other people, irrespective to their religion, color, creed, or caste. We, it's not our in our nature to go around but biting because whatever the tongue says, we have to be we have to be answerable on the day of judgment. There was a situation in which Bilal radiallahu anhu and Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar called him Yabna Sauda, O son of a black woman. And so Rasulullah sallam, uh, he, you know, Bilal went to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and complained. And that's the way it should be. You know, take it to an authority. If you can handle it, it's all well and good. If you cannot, take it to the one who has the authority to rectified he went right away to rectify and he said yeah brother you have you know discredited him or ridiculed him by his mother you have still have that trace of jahiliya within you and so he begged for forgiveness and so forth and then it was said that abu abu zar went to bilal and said so he acknowledged the fact that he he did um, uh, give him, you know, say these bad things, and you know he asked him for forgiveness. This is the this is the method. I mean, if somebody does something, go and accept, and he accepted. And in some narration, they said he put his cheek on the ground and he said to Bilal. You know, da qadamaka ala al khad. You know, put your foot on, on this cheek. And Bilal says, "Ha shali waj hisajid an lillahi an atahu an atahu bi qadami." You know, uh, you know, may Allah forbid that a face that does sajda to Allah that I'm going to place my foot on that face. And um, so we go through it, a few hadith here, Kullum Muslim, Muslim Haram. I'll just read the hadith. I just got a, um, a note here that we have like four minutes left or so. The blood of a Muslim property honor as sacred and inviolable for another Muslim. Uh, Saeed Ibn Said reported the Prophet said, verily the worst act of usury of riba is to attack the reputation of a Muslim without a just cause. Um, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stand up on the member and said, oh, you Muslim who claim yourself with Iman from your mouth, but faith has not entered your heart. Do not cause annoyance towards all the Muslim by making fun of them, searching for their fault. This is because whoever like to search for the fault of his Muslim brother, Allah in turn will search out his fault. And when Allah searches out someone's fault, he will expose whatever secret that person has, even if it were hidden in his baggage, in some translation under his bed. So if you start, go about looking for people fault, beware of suspicion, for suspicion is the worst of false tales. Do not spy on one another. Do not look for the fault of one another. Do not be jealous of one another. Do not envy one another. Do not hate one another. Do not desert or shun one another, and O oh, servants of Allah, be brothers. al -Awzai, he said, Tajassus means searching for something, while Tahassus means eavesdropping on someone's conversation. And then this issue here of backbiting, you know, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi once said, do you know what riba is, what backbiting is? And the, the companion said, Allah and his messenger, no. Then he said, mentioning, you're mentioning your brother with something about him which he dislikes. So even if it is true and he dislike it and you mention behind his back, this is something that, you know, should not, uh, should not happen. Um, so 
Then someone asks, how if my brother possesses that characteristic which I'm mentioning? The Prophet said, if he possesses that which you mentioned, then you have backbitten him. And if he does not, in other words, you are lying against him while saying behind his back, that which you say of him, you have slandered him. Very powerful hadith. Verse 13 is basically about dealing with humanity. Ya Yohannas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakru al ma'unza wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum min Allahi atqaakum min Allahi alim al khabir O mankind, we have created you from a male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you with Allah is that who has taqwa, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. So these are some of the points that we should look for, tolerance and acceptance, avoid being judgmental. Difference between us and people of other religion revolves around the obedience of Allah and his messenger. And he for, after forbade, uh, after Allah forbade us from backbiting and belittling other people, he alerts mankind that we are all equal in as humanity. And so when we look for, uh, talk to each other, we do not look for each other as ta'arafu, you know, to know one another, not tafakhur, not to be proud of, of who we are. And Satan wants people to think that they are better than one another. What better is actually in the sight of Allah. Honor is earth through taqwa of Allah, not your ethnicity, not your family lineage. And the final verse, call it till Arabu Amanna, Kulam Tu'minu, Walakim Kulu Aslamna, Walama Yetkil Imanu fi Kulu Bikum, Wa in Tuti Allah or Rasulahu, La Yelitkum in Amalikum Shaya, in Allah of Rahim. The Bedouins say that we believe, you know, Amanna. Say to them, You believe not, but you say we surrender, we have Islam. For faith has not entered your heart. But if you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not decrease anything in reward for your deeds. Allah is of returning most merciful. This ayah and the hadith of Jibra'il tells us there is a difference between Islam and Iman. So Islam is when you start to do the rituals. Iman is when these the, the faith in Allah starts to reach every every cell in your body surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you pray, you pray with that deeper understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm praying to him, he has commanded me to do that, He, I believe in him, I believe in the books he sent and, and you know, all of the arkat of Iman, that you, you understand them and you surrender to all of that. And so whoever comes to Islam, especially this was from Bani Asad, they felt that they were giving some, uh, doing some, you know, good to the Muslim community by becoming Islam, becoming Muslims. And so Allah rectified them and say, you know, you still have your Iman to get into your heart. And if you follow Allah and his messenger, this is what, is important. He will not decrease in your reward. In fact, he will increase what you have in Allah Ghafur Rahim. Again, Allah is of forgiving, is merciful.